So, um, Mr. Kalau, first of all, take us through your thoughts about how, as a company, you're responding to friends, foes, or however you could class them, like uh, Netflix. We welcome uh, uh, President Juncker and Commissioner Select uh, ANSIP and Oettinger Digital Europe uh, positioning. It's very positive. It gives the right framework for the future, but I have to say, let, since I'm the, one of the last, we are the last speaking, let, it's nice that we can take notes about what I said, so let me, let's face it, we are, Etno, I think the E stands for Europe, right? Uh, we've been lectured today by Lowell McAdam, who's doing a tremendous job in the US, and by Reed Hastings, who is another American company, so we should ask ourselves, how come that a European powerful group uh, is lectured by two very good, but you know, American people, and what will make uh, the, the digital Europe and the single digital market vision that we all share, and it is at the base of my investment, what will make happen? And I think three things are very important, and we have to stress, and again, maybe I will not be particularly politically correct, but there are three things that uh, the new commission needs to, to take on board. The first one is clearly this point of return on capital. The, the industry is not returning enough capital in Europe. Uh, we have to face that they built the perfect trap box in Europe. There are low barriers to entry, so everybody gets spectrum, newcomers, and so on. High barriers to exit. As soon as somebody wants to sell, you have remedies, mitigation. I, see, I think Xavier, in the previous meeting, talked about damages. It's, it's true, there is this perception that, so we, the bees come to the box, they go into the box, they cannot come out, and then regulation starts beating them up. <laughs> this is, it's a perfect trap box created in Europe. When I talk to regulators in both Europe and in some countries, they tell me, oh, that's not true, you have a good return on capital. And I'm saying, where do you get that from? And they say, oh, you know, if I take your, ret your returns, I take away what you overpaid for the spectrum, I normalize what you should pay every year, I take away the acquisitions that you have made to repair the thing, then you have a good return on capital. And my point is, yeah, sure, if a referee in a football match when sees the man down in the penalty area takes away from the video, the kick, and then takes away the push, and then stops the image when you are halfway, or of course, it's not a penalty kick, you're flying, it's a great, uh, it's a great thing, but you know, the regulators should start taking the books, take the same animal reports that these guys take, and you know, they're audited, and look at the results. So, first point, the commission needs to focus on return on capital and accept that something has gone wrong and has to be fixed. Second point, tackling monopolies. I like what Fatima uh, Barroso said, fair, equal, non-discriminatory. This applies to some of the guys in this room. I'm sorry, I'm not a member of Etno. There are still some fortresses, but there are new ones. There are new digital fortresses. Vice President Kiruz is here tonight. We had a famous dinner in Barcelona where correctly and fairly she accused us of not being innovative three, four years ago, and she said, why don't you do more services over the top yourself? Now, I tell you, we do. But there is a problem, you know, for example, our messaging service does not work on this phone, which is the thing that Reed Hastings said, uh, iOS has opened the world. Yes, it has opened the world, but now their messaging service works here, mine doesn't work here. Does not work like theirs, it's discriminated. But of course, now they're very strong. Now it works here, which is another thing. However, if I want to send to Vice President Cruz a message, well, she's probably on WhatsApp. WhatsApp has 600 million customers. I have 24, not million, 24. And therefore, I cannot connect. <laughs> I cannot connect. So what do I do? I can send an SMS to Congo. I can send an SMS to Papua New Guinea. But I cannot connect a dominant position that WhatsApp now with the Facebook acquisition has with you know, the normal world. So we need to tackle the issue of uh, digital monopolies, whether they are physical on network or whether they are uh, purely, uh, I mean, Google search, 90% market share. Uh, who wants to put money into the new competitor <coughs> of Google search? Is anybody in this room happy to invest in a new competitor to Google? I don't think so, because clearly they are dominant. And third and last thing, uh, again, I, uh, Michel Combe, I think, said something uh, about uh, redefi redefining markets and uh, taking a different appro approach to competition law. We need much quicker, and I think also uh, 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 Fatima said something, we need much faster processes for deciding in, uh, in the digital age uh, about uh, competition issues. Because, uh, I mean, it took us from 1998 to 2012 to close the hardcore margin squeeze. 
Uh, it took us five years to win a, a, a case in Italy, but of course Telecom Italia is, appe is appealing, so who knows who is right really in the end. Uh, and again, even for Google, even for Facebook, for this company, it's not fair to nail them down for 10 years in Europe. So the three things that I strongly recommend to the new commissions to focus on are return on investment for the industry, tackle the digital monopolies, whether they are physical or over the top, it doesn't matter, and make sure that the competition law is applied quickly, swiftly, and give certainty to me and to my investors, who, whom I have to explain why we are investing as Vodafone $28 billion in the future of digital Europe. Mm. Thank you. That's what I recommend. So, uh, <coughs> Mr. Baxas, you, uh, you applauded then, you, 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 you agree with these, these comments, you, you think the, uh, you, uh, you, you're suggesting that Mr. Hastings views that, uh, that the open internet is, 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 is not being fulfilled by the telecoms groups at the moment are, are appropriate. Well, first of all, I think um, uh, this time I'm in full agreement with him. Um, and uh, I think that the sentiment in the room basically is also in agreement with uh, what you just described, uh, Vittorio. Because let's face it, it is a fact that over the last three to five years or whatever, uh, the um, backlog in investments in network capacities and uh, uh, yeah, distribution of, uh, of networks which are capable for higher speeds, etc., are lagging that of the United States in Europe. And, uh, if we, uh, and that means that, all, and, and that boils back to also the, uh, the, um, the comment on return on capital, because these things tend to, uh, to fly uh, together. And I think that the innovations uh, space in the telecom during this period has suffered a lot, because if you create a really good service, the, uh, which in a way could fly, uh, the um, us being afraid of regulation coming down our necks later on, uh, giving other easy access to the uh, to the one is coming up as an uh, as an example, and uh, and that means that the investment climate for uh, the last period have not been sufficiently well um, nurtured or structured. So he's pointing to the very right change of sentiment that should come with the new uh, commission. Mm. Then we all know that in this industry, it's all about three things. It's good quality networks, and it's um, good handsets. It's handsets that really serves, and we've got some brilliant in, uh, innovations in that over the last, over the same period of time, really. And then it's uh, services that customers really start to, to use. And we have, a, again, a number of, of good examples on that. But it needs to evolve from where we are now. And this innovation element loses out in Europe because the regulatory play on end-user uh, pricing, which has been there, is basically a wet blanket on innovation as such. I believe that uh, uh, regulation should be on wholesale level get rid of uh, the end user focus and let competition and industry st structure take care of that. Mm. Okay. And as for the net neutrality, I think you will come back to that uh, later on. Because so it, it, we are not the guys in this room that uh, is, not, is against an open internet. On the contrary, we deliver an open internet and we want to do that on high quality uh, networks uh, where, where customers um, by also differentiated services from us. Mm -hmm. I guess the, the, the problem would be that, that the, 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 the regulators might say that if they left you to it, you wouldn't build fibre quickly enough, you wouldn't reach the places they want you to reach, and they need to encourage you through regulation to, in order to do this, through unbundling and through other ways. Yeah, but it's in a way the other way around. Uh, let this be a competitive market, and uh, technologies will probably be deployed faster. We'll move on to the net neutrality debate. Uh, I mean, Cisco clearly at the heart of, of, of much of the internet in terms of the equipment. Um, do you agree with Mr. Hastings', Hastings point that, uh, you know, that there should be no specialization, no differentiation within the network uh, environment? I mean, do you, how do you see the, the internet working at the moment from your angle? 
No, I don't agree with that because I think that the reality is is that you know when you look at regulation, the danger is you regulate for the past, and I think what we must focus on is regulation for the future. And if you look at any prediction of the growth of the internet traffic, you know it'll multiply by three by 2018. You can't build an internet that doesn't have some form of traffic shaping and traffic management. You just can't do it. So I, I think to the point that was made in terms of how you accelerate investment, you accelerate investment by making the investment more attractive. And I think that you have to be able to allow specialised services. And I, as a consumer, set aside business to business, I, as a consumer, want the choice. I want, I want the choice of whether I want a, a service that has guaranteed quality to my home. Likewise, if I'm a business, and this is really key, I think, across the European Union, businesses more and more will become very reliant on the internet. Historically, they had separate networks and they did things on their own. In the future, it will be all on the internet. I mean, you have to be able to have specialised services because businesses will demand it, and they demand it because all their factories are going to run it, the way they interface with their customers will run, will run it, and candidly, the pace of innovation will be dependent on their ability to really leverage the open internet and the global market opportunity that it presents. So I fundamentally believe that you have to be able to have some form of specialised services. I think it's absolutely key to investment, and it's key, I think, to the long-term success of operators, of industry, everybody associated with the internet. Mm -hmm. Just, I mean, in practical terms at the moment, do you find... Uh, undue pressure, undue strain on, on, on the internet through uh, the, the growth of video on demand services through social media? I, I mean, I, I think the, you, know, you mentioned social media. I think one of the things that you know, is really key in the industry today is social media. If people don't provide good services, the social media will tell you immediately. So I, I think there's regulation purely by you know, the consumers and how they use social media. You know, from my perspective, any estimate, the, the estimates are, are, are around about 161 zettabytes by 2018. Mm. That's a lot. It's three times the internet today. And, and as I said, I think you've got to make sure that if you build that capacity, you can't build that capacity where everybody has complete equal access. You cannot do it. So I think there's got to be some prudent re regulation that allows the investment in specialised services, that it allows the build-up, and allows people to then demonstrate the types of services that can be used, utilised. The big thing that we talk about a lot in Europe is how do we solve the healthcare issues, how do we solve some of these big society issues. You can only solve them by the provision of specialised services to the home and to businesses. If you don't have that, you can't guarantee any form of quality. And that's what I think is really key, looking forward, not looking back on the next generation of regulation. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Mr. De Rossen, uh, how does the net neutrality debate affect you, uh, uh, you as a satellite uh, operator? Effectively, you, you, ha you see the traffic come across your own uh, systems, and, and much of it you know, is, is TV, I suppose. Is TV dying off now with the growth of Netflix? <coughs> yes, and uh, I feel a bit like a space oddity in this, uh, in this uh, panel. But uh, like uh, telcos, we are... Uh, an infrastructure company. It's only that our infrastructure is 36,000 kilometers uh, up there in uh, space. Now, many people don't know, Commissioner Cruz does know, that in our field, Europe is the world leader. The four largest satellite operators are four European companies. And of the four, the best is my company, of course. Uh, however, it is interesting to know that two of the four Luxembourgian companies which means that Mr. Juncker has been exposed to our world very, very carefully, and uh, I'm sure this would help him uh, take the right uh, decisions when he uh, starts his new uh, job. Having said this, you asked about television. Uh, it, we often hear now that television is going to decline. I believe that's uh, rubbish. Uh, one in 2016... 1.5 billion households in the world will be uh, using one or more televisions. And that number is growing approximately by 2% a year. Okay, so that number is growing. Of this 1.5 billion, access is very different from one region to the other. Some access are going down, some access are going up. Satellite is going up, terrestrial is going down. 
And what is also going up is hybrid. Okay? Satellite can be combined very well with the internet. And in fact, this will happen more and more. Now, why is uh, this all expanding and growing? Because the new needs of the customers are something that we can satisfy very well. Let me give you four brief illustrations. Customers want quality. Now, we are now providing, as you know, high definition. Down the road, we see the arrival of 4K, and we already see in Japan that 8K will arrive one day. So more and more quality is being provided. Our satellites, not just ours, our competitors also, are definition agnostic, friendly. So we are ready for 4K or 8K. Then customers want choice, and we provide choice, more and more channels. That's why the number of channels is growing. Then customers now want interactivity. We provide interactivity. And now they even want mobility. They want to be able to watch wherever they are, whatever they are doing. We can also provide that. So the good news is this market is expanding and will continue to expand. Here's the catch. All this is going to create a traffic jam, a growing traffic jam. And so we, we satellite operators don't care too much about the fundamental debates on net neutrality, but we believe that we can help. Why can we help? Because with this growing problem of congestion, let me give you another figure. Currently, a household in Western Europe uses, let's say, 20 uh, gigabits. It will, they will use, in a few years, 700 because of the, ch the number of channels that uh, they will be watching and because of more interactivity and all these other reasons. So the more you use, the system uses satellites to offload the terrestrial <coughs> system, the less jam they will be. So that is our contribution to reducing the congestion that otherwise will be a major problem for all our industry. Mm. So in summary, what do we do? We provide what we call a triple C to the triple W. What does that mean? We provide uh, total coverage, we provide cost efficiency, and uh, we provide complementarity. And double, triple W is worldwide waiting. That's what we do at Knife. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, and Mr. Aslan, I, I, I was intrigued by, by your biography in the sense of, of you, you sit on quite a few of the, the boards of, of te actual technology groups within Turk Telecom. I mean, have, have, you, have you seen it difficult to create innovation within your company to you know, bring out I don't know, challenges to a Facebook or a Google or, 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 or even, even a uh, Netflix in terms of content? Or, or do you see the, uh, the door very much open to sort of join in with the, the internet economy? Well, uh, first of all, uh, let me start by saying we're very happy, as, as Vittorio started, that uh, most telcos have invested and continue to invest in the past few years, despite the fact that it was not an easy environment for the telcos, because as you probably, uh, we all know that uh, many of us uh, have been growing at single digit, and, and many of us also, uh, many telcos in Europe in particular, have not been uh, growing at all in the top line, and that was uh, also discussed in the previous panel. Um, this said, there's clearly a major, major uh, market imbalance and what we are doing is, uh, as telcos purely, is, is, is not necessarily sustainable. Can this be sustainable? The answer is no. <coughs> Something has to be done. And I, it's my first time here, but I would say, I mean, this, has, this, this topic has, bes has been discussed for maybe five, six, seven years. And we probably have been saying the same thing for the past four, five, six years. The question is, can we do something about it and when shall we do something about it? And the answer is immediately because this is absolutely not sustainable. Now, on the regulatory side, uh, I did notice that uh, there's a lot of focus on, on price and uh, Vittori mentioned the three key uh, issues that Fatima mentioned, but I do stress the fact that price is, is one element and should not be the driver because for us to compete, we need to have different prices. Now, to your question. Um, we have actually acquired companies, uh, some we were startups, some were uh, junior companies uh, uh, and they are in many geographies. We've uh, acquired ICTs in the content, uh, education uh, content, uh, we've acquired an R&D uh, firm uh, and uh, we are big believers that this is where the future is. 
Clearly, there is a market imbalance, but we are big believers that this market imbalance has to end, and we are investing accordingly. Uh, we do believe that ICT business will be a huge business uh, in our market in Turkey. In the 2023 uh, vision of, uh, of the government, we're looking at uh, ICT business reaching 160 billion Turkish lira. That's about 8% of GDP. So investment there is important, and uh, we continue to, uh, to focus on that. And when we talk about returns, uh, as Vittorio mentioned, uh, of course, returns are extremely important. The way I see this is um, we need to look at a different business model. Uh, and uh, as was mentioned also in previous panels, we are essentially one ecosystem. And we cannot be so diverse in terms of uh, our regulatory regimes. We cannot have one very, very strict regulation and one pretty much a free regulatory environment. And the example that Vittorio mentioned is a perfect example that, you know, how can one compete when there's such a diverse regime? And that regime, that change and diversity has to change very, very quickly. Mm. Thank you very much. Mr. Mr. Dunlind, um, Telesonera is often held up as a company which is investing and it's a Scandinavian, which, as we all know, is brilliant because Scandinavia has the best networks and, and the, the, the fastest uh, speeds and all such things. I mean, uh, what, what, what has Telesonera been doing in, in this sort of space to, to be so lauded by the investor panel that we, we heard earlier? <coughs> well, first of all, I mean, being last on the panel, uh, most is said, especially when Vittorio goes first and normally says uh, <laughs> wise things, and I agree. Um, you know, in our case, we, we operate the internet together, uh, and many colleagues in the industry, we operate it, and it works fairly well today. Uh, so I think that that's not the issue. The issue is how we will we make it work uh, into the future? Uh, and as, as some of you already mentioned, one easy answer is yes, we have to invest. Uh, and we came out of the Capital Markets Day yesterday where we announced another billion dollars on top of our already high capex uh, numbers, which takes us roughly just shy of the Swedish defense budget, uh, half of the Swedish defense budget in a year. Uh, so we are investing a lot, uh, and I think that's the answer. Uh, and we just have to make uh, sure we execute and, and do good returns here. In Scandinavia, uh, we're the privilege of being in many advanced markets. I mean, some of the most advanced markets in the world. Internet penetration, one of the highest. Mobile penetration, one of the highest. And the combination, one of the highest. And we operate through the value chains. So we have the largest or the second largest it varies from month to month. IP backbone in the world. We have fixed and mobile assets across a lot of our markets. So we, we know the internet as well. We see what's going on in the internet. And you know, to this discussion and debate with net neutrality, what is it actually? I mean, we need to make it work. We see what's getting, starting to shape up as problems. We short term can invest our way out of those problems and make sure the customers get the bad experience, best experience. But the question still remains long term. And I say we, we will offer services for those who want extra service quality. And I think that is very normal in many industries. Uh, and I, th I hope this will be normal also in our industry. So simply put, uh, internet works today because of demand and supply. Internet will work tomorrow if demand and supply uh, keep working. So for me, it's quite simple when it comes to net neutrality. Mm. I suppose that the argument is that, that there's demand supply for roads, but you know, toll roads ultimately may not be in the best interest for the for the for the for the, for the you know, road industry. Let's say, I mean, so do you, so going forward, you you'd always expect companies who use your networks to pay for access to your networks, certainly if they want a premium service anyway. So I'm saying we will keep investing, providing services to our end customers as well to our partners. And we have partners today buying quality of service in our network because they want to have a better service. And even if the big ones, I mean, today, two, uh, two players account for 65% of the traffic in our networks. Of course, they may not buy quality of service, but the smaller player, the innovation, the entrepreneurs, they may buy quality of service because they want to compete on the same terms as Mr. Hastings and others. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, uh, Mr. Klau, first of all, we're coming to Can you. I completely support Johan's point? And, you know, I think uh, the, the net neutrality uh, fans, and especially Reed Hastings, they confuse two things, probably a little bit on purpose, if we are honest. <laughs> it's one thing, he's completely right in saying, I am not pushing anything, it's the customer pulling. So it's the customer should, who should pay. I'm not a broadcaster. I think it's fine. I mean, I know other operators have different opinions. 
I think it's fair. I think he is describing the reality. Customer wants. Where the argument then gets stretched is when it says, oh, but you should not have two different lanes, because if one is much better than the other, then by, def by definition, the other will be worse. And my point is, and so what? Am I not allowed to design my business delivery system for my CapEx, for my shareholders? Is he too worried that maybe somebody more efficient than him can? So why now? Of course, I will never discriminate Netflix against Amazon or Netflix against uh, BBC or Netflix against the Murdoch. Same service should re, you know, get the same level of uh, treatment. But if the customer wants to pay more, why do you have the, why do you pretend that you can shape our industry? Just run your great movie business. I love Netflix. I'm a Netflix junkie. I love Marco Polo. I'm just waiting for the third series of House of Cards. <laughs> and invest as much as you can in that, but don't tell us how our business model should be uh, modeled because that does not make sense. Well, presumably he'd say that the business model should be predicated on the, the customer, i.e. me, uh, us in the audience, paying for our data as we do. And if you are unhappy with my quality, you can go to one of theirs, and if uh, you are happy to pay a bit more to get more quality for Netflix and for the others, great. But why not having uh, the different lanes? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, how do, can I guarantee a certain... It's my job to create different lanes. Segmentation is good, discrimination is bad. And, it, and if you bring this uh, um, way of reasoning one step further, you could say that uh, the Marco Polo uh, initiative is a, is a wonderful thing because people want it. But on the other hand, um, they also want good capacity, good uh, quality network in order to get, get the stuff. Mm. And uh, in, in a way, uh, if net neutrality also means free, uh, no charges involved. You have a bit of a, uh, of a challenge because take it one, uh, take the analogy one more step further. The IPI, the IPR rights to the Netflix Marco Polo would probably uh, not have happened if it had been a regulatory threat that the value of that IPR would be eroded by regulation. Mm. Then Marco Polo wouldn't be done. Well, Marco Polo is done because there is a demand out there and investments to uh, good quality network with high capacities is associated with that. Then we're back to the triangle, good quality networks, handsets or, or terminals, and good services. Mm. And uh, I, I'm absolutely sure that if the IPR issue was eroded by a net neutrality-like aspects to, I created something good on the content side, but hi, you can come and get it and sell it, uh, uh, sell it in a different business model by advertising, for example, I would never invest in that. That's a good idea, actually, we should do it. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Content portability. Yeah, content portability. At the source. Exactly, at the source, yeah. But if you take it up to that level, I mean, then you find that it doesn't That's a work. Super good point.